In this video, we review the new Azure Update Manager. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraltos. Microsoft recently announced that Azure Update Manager is now generally available. In this video, we'll look at what it is and how to enable it with Azure policies. Before that, please like, subscribe, and share with a friend. That helps others discover this channel. Check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 365 and Intune Management, and hybrid identities with Windows AD and Azure AD, now Enter ID, available at udemy.com. Links are below, and thank you channel members, your support is appreciated. Back to it, before we talk about Azure Update Manager, let's quickly review Azure Automation Update Manager. This is the predecessor to Azure Update Manager. It's part of an Azure Automation account and serves the same purpose, automating and reporting on patching for Windows and Linux servers. The difference is that the Azure Automation Update Manager relies on a log analytics account and the MMA or log analytics agent. That agent will be retired in August of 2024. Going forward, the new Azure Update Manager is the best choice for managing server updates in and outside of Azure. Azure Update Manager is a standalone SaaS service. We don't have to link it to log analytics or Azure Automation. It supports Windows Server and Linux. That's one important thing to note about this feature. It doesn't support Windows clients. There are other services for client updates such as Windows Auto Patch and Intune. Azure Update Manager supports Windows Server 2008 and newer, although if you're still running Server 2008, you should probably focus on updating that. It supports Red Hat, CentOS, and other Linux operating system. It can also update images stored in an Azure Compute Gallery. The service can manage computers in Azure, on-premises, or other clouds. It uses the Azure VM agent to manage Azure VMs and the Azure Connected Machine agent for Arc-enabled servers outside of Azure. One item to keep in mind is the price. There is no charge for Azure VMs and $5 per month for Arc-enabled servers. It's only free for Azure VMs. Coming up, we'll enable Azure Update Manager on a subscription. There are a couple ways to do this. We can scan the update status and deploy updates manually, but that doesn't scale well. Instead, this video uses Azure policies to enable assessments on subscriptions. This way, all existing and newly added VMs are included. Another policy is used to configure remediation. Again, we want an automated process that updates existing and newly added VMs. And I have a disclaimer on this video. This is intended to illustrate how it works. It's not a guide to implementing it in production. There are a lot of configuration options that will determine how patching takes place. For example, you may want to create multiple schedules to update groups of VMs on different days or schedule updates across multiple time zones. Also, my lab environment isn't the best example. There are a lot of Windows clients and VMs that just haven't been turned on in a while. What I'm saying is test it before you trust it. With that, let's go to the Azure portal and get started. Here we are in the Azure portal. Let's start by going to Azure Update Manager. Here we have an overview display of our update status, patch orchestration, update installation status. And if we scroll down, we have pending updates for Windows and Linux. Your view may look different from mine. I recorded a video that started with a default, nothing configured view, but unfortunately that footage was not usable. So the information you see here is what we'll get later on. We'll just keep going with the steps needed to get to this point. Before we get this information updated, we need to configure our assessments. The assessment is what gets the information about the update status. Let's do this first by an individual computer. If we go to Machines and Update Manager, here we have a list of all the Azure VMs with their status. Notice I have a few that are unsupported. These are mostly Windows 10 or Windows 11, Azure Virtual Desktop Session Hosts, and other Windows clients. Windows Client OS is not supported with Azure Update Manager. There's no way for the filter to remove unsupported VMs, at least not at the time of recording. We can change the grouping to group by update status. We could select one or more virtual machine and then check for updates. This will run a one-time check. And again, if you're just starting out, you won't see any pending updates. That would work, but it's not an efficient way to assess all the computers in our subscriptions. Notice at the top, we have the option to enable periodic assessments using Azure policies. Let's use that as a way to configure our assessments. Let's go to get started. And from here, we'll assign a policy. There are two configuration policies, one for periodic checking of missing system updates 
on Azure VMs and the other on Arc-enabled servers. The Azure VM policy will run the assessment on, well, Azure VMs. The others for organizations that may want to manage patches outside of Azure, on-prem or other clouds. Let's select periodic checking for Azure VMs. We'll go to assign. We'll select our scope. We can assign this to a management group that would include all subscriptions in that management group, an individual subscription or resource groups in a subscription. For this example, we'll set it to our subscription. And we want it scoped to the subscription, so we'll leave the resource group blank and select. And if you have multiple subscriptions, you can either select a parent management group or run through these steps to assign it to multiple subscriptions. Add a description if you'd like and go next to advanced. We can leave that and go next to parameters. Uncheck only show parameters that need input or review. Make sure the assessment mode is set to automatic by platform and the OS type is Windows. That is, of course, if you're running the assessment on Windows OS. If you're doing both, you'll have to run through these steps again, only selecting the other OS type. Let's go next to remediation. On the remediations tab, select create a remediation task. Selecting this will enable assessments on existing VMs. Let's go next to non-compliant message. And we can add a message. We'll go next to review and create and create. This will take some time to run. The periodic check takes place every 24 hours. Let's pause here and come back once the assessment has finished. It's been a couple of days. Let's look at what the periodic scan has to show. At overview, we have some new information. It shows patch orchestration is done by Windows Automatic Updates. That will change to customer managed schedules for our servers in an upcoming step. And if we scroll down, we can see pending updates. Let's look at the status by machines. We can click on the panel and it takes us to machines. There are a total of 25 VMs, eight with no update data. These are probably VMs I used at some point and shut down. You probably won't have a lot of deallocated VMs in a production environment. There's zero with no pending updates and six have pending updates and two VMs need to be rebooted. And finally, we have 11 unsupported VMs. Those are Windows 10 and Windows 11 clients, including my AVD session hosts. So far, we only assigned the policy for periodic assessments to the VMs. We haven't configured any orchestration to apply the updates. Let's do that next. Let's go back to get started. From here, we have the option to schedule updates. We'll select that. Select the subscription and resource group for the maintenance configuration. I'll create a new resource group for this example. Give it a name. Maintenance window three day for this example. You'll see why the name includes three days in a minute. The region is where the maintenance configuration is located. Set the maintenance scope. We'll use guest for this example. That includes Azure VMs and Arc enabled servers. We could also select OS images for virtual machine scale sets or dedicated hosts. We'll leave the reboot settings to reboot if required. You may also consider forcing a reboot. Let's add a schedule. We need to provide the start of the schedule. I'll set this for today. Let's set the time to 3 p.m. and be sure that the time zone is correct. We'll give this a two hour maintenance window. That should be enough. This is for monthly patching, so we'll set the repeat for every month. We can set a specific day, but this also has the logic to base the updates on Patch Tuesday. So if we select the second Tuesday, that's Patch Tuesday, we also get an offset. Most organizations want to leave a couple days between when the patch is released before it's applied. I'll set this to three days after Patch Tuesday, the second Tuesday of the month. Based on my testing, this configuration will first run at 3 p.m. three days after the next Patch Tuesday. If you want it to run sooner, you can set on the to today's date and a time a couple hours in the future. Make sure to adjust the schedule after testing is done. We walk through changing the schedule shortly. We can also set an end date. We'll save. And now we'll go next to dynamic scopes. I prefer dynamic scopes because if configured properly, it will apply to new VMs when they're added. 
Let's add a scope. We can set our subscriptions. We'll add two of them for this example. And then we can set filters. We can filter down to resource group. Let's leave that empty. I want this scope to apply to both subscriptions. For the resource type, we have the option for Azure Virtual Machines or Arc Enabled Servers. Let's remove the Arc Enabled Servers from this. We can specify a location. If you wanted maintenance windows on different days across regions, for example, this is handy if you're dealing with environments that span multiple time zones. We can select the OS type. This example will use Windows. And we can define tags. Another strategy would be to assign patch tags to VMs to coordinate with different schedules. We'll click OK to add the scope. We'll save. We have two options. We can change the required option to ensure schedule supportability. This option will update the patch orchestration from existing options to customer managed schedules. Continue with supported machines only. will only include machines that already have patch orchestration set to customer managed schedules. We'll leave it set to default and save. We got a few errors that popped up and that's expected because within that group were Windows 10 and 11 clients. Those are the ones that erred. And that's fine for this example. Let's go next to machines. We could add individual resources. Let's skip that and go to updates. Here we can add or remove update classifications for Windows and Linux. Let's leave it set to critical and security updates. You may want to add updates and create a daily reoccurring schedule for definition updates. As I said at the beginning, each organization has different requirements for patching. We could also include or exclude specific KBs by package ID. We'll go next to tags, add tags as needed. We'll go to review and create. And once validation passes, click create. Once that finishes, we still have one more step. We need to attach the maintenance configuration to any servers we want to update. We can do that one at a time, but that would require manual action each time a new VM is added. Instead, let's use policies to automatically attach the maintenance configuration to servers. To do that, we need to go to the maintenance configuration we just created. We'll open it. Go to Properties. From Properties, find the ID. And we need to copy that ID. Save that. We'll need it for an upcoming step. Let's go back to Update Manager and get started. And from get started, we'll go to assign policy. Here are all of our Azure Update Manager policies. Select schedule reoccurring updates using Azure Update Manager. We'll assign this policy. Select your scope. That can be a subscription, management group, or even a resource group in a subscription. If you have multiple subscriptions, apply this to the parent management group or run through these steps for each subscription. Next, let's go to parameters. Add the maintenance configuration ID we just copied. Next, go to remediation. Make sure that system assigned managed identity is selected and check the create remediation task box. That will apply this policy to existing VMs as well as new VMs. We'll go to Review and Create, and Create. It'll take some time for this policy to take effect on existing VMs. Once the policy is applied, the VMs will get updated during the next schedule run. If you want updates to run sooner than the scheduled reoccurrence, you may need to update that schedule. You may also want to change the time updates run once in production. Next, let's update our schedule. Go to Maintenance Configuration. Select the maintenance schedule we created earlier. Go to Schedule. And we can modify the schedule. I want to change the time from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. And again, based on my testing, the first time the schedule will run is 11 p.m. on the first day of the month. This is the schedule I'm using to trigger an update before the next Patch Tuesday. 
We'll pause here to give the policies time to apply and the updates time to run. Some time has passed and we have results now. Let's review the updates. We'll start with update status by machine. The overview shows the number of computers and status. We have some pending updates, some pending reboots, some machines without any pending updates. Those have the updates applied and then some with no update data. Also notice the VMs that are part of Azure Update Manager have switched to customer managed schedule. Let's look at the update installation status. I'm recording this during a maintenance window. So we have some completed, failed, and in progress status. Let's go to history. This gives us the history of the actions on the VMs. Let's go to machines. And something I want to point out, I'm forcing a lot of the scanning and updates by adjusting schedules. I don't want to wait until patch Tuesday to record the ending of this video. What we see here is out of date. Updates ran, but the assessment hasn't taken place yet. That takes place every 24 hours. If you want to see the results of an assessment right away, you can select one or more and then check for updates. That will initiate a one-time assessment on that computer. We can also select one of these VMs. And that takes us to the update page for that VM. From here, we can verify the assessment is enabled. We used a policy to set that up. We can verify that patch orchestration is set to customer managed schedules. That's also configured with the Azure policy. We can go to history. We get the details of the past and current operations. We have an assessment in progress on this that we initiated. And if we go to scheduling, we can view the maintenance configuration applied to this VM. That is how to configure Azure Update Manager for Azure VMs with Azure policies. I hope that helps you better understand how to use Azure Update Manager. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.